Okay, three, two, one, go. Hey gamers, this is Kita, and today we have an okay low tide. I have some people here to help me commentate. I'm ZFG. And uh, I'm Mubsy. And so what are we watching today? Well, we are watching all dungeons get beaten in just one pause. Whoa. How is that possible? Well, there's a person named Jolin, and he came up with a bunch of tricks, and all of a sudden it was possible. Dang. So I remember this used to be done in two pauses. How did we get rid of that one pause? Um, Itemless Escape was discovered, and then an Itemless Cucko Jump was discovered. Uh, both by Joe Lennon, and so all of a sudden we could get through the entire child section without any pauses now, as long as we did some rerouting as adult. Nice, nice. So why, why do we care about beating the game in so few pauses? Because pauses are evil, and pause buffering is hard. Good answer. Allow me to answer that question. Now, to the ordinary gamer, the amount of pauses seems something so unimportant. But to the elite few, the gamers that are really out here grinding their favorite games, the idea of minimal pauses is the most interesting thing in the world to them. This is what they wake up every morning for. It's true. All right, sounds great. So yeah, this run is going to do lots of crazy tricks just to do everything possible to avoid pausing at any cost. And there's lots of interesting things that need to be done to avoid pausing so often. You need to pause every time you select an item? That is true. You do need to pause every time you select an item. I guess that means we'll have to not select items very often. That means we're gonna have to use tricks to avoid selecting items. Looks like there'll be a lot of tricks necessary for that. Quite a few. And a lot of revisiting dungeons. So if you guys like seeing dungeons more than once, you're watching the right tasks. Ooh. I'm just really interesting, interested to see how a normal person does itemless escape, because I had a ton of trouble doing it. I, yeah, that'll be neat. I'm not going to make any big spoilers, but... This run was started before Jolin made a setup for it, so, um... Well, you're not allowed to use setups in a TAS anyway. You're allowed to when it's faster. <laughs> I timed it, it would have been a, like a minute faster if, uh... If I, about a minute 20 faster, I think, if I, if Jolin had come up with the setup about a week earlier, but... All right, so right here he's setting up for escaping, uh, escaping the forest without any items. How precise is this again? Uh, to the ten thousandth of a unit. Um, and for just reference, usually if you were to say hold up and have Link move for a frame, like he's going to move five to ten units, and this is one ten thousandth of one unit. So it's very, very, very precise. Yeah, so he has to get into a super specific position, and then he can throw this rock and talk to the guard to clip through him. <laughs> this is all yeah, just now, to like get in the, the exact ne necessary position. Now, what I always like to think of when I was doing this is that I'm one of those uh, dancing spiders, and I'm doing one of my mating dances to try to, you know, make Mido, you know, my friend. And uh, after doing a successful mating dance, I, I feel like he's gonna let me by. Uh, makes sense, I guess. 
It looks more like when you type on a typewriter and it goes back and forth. Or an old school printer. But that's basically what we're doing here, because every time you move left and right at different speeds, you actually move just ever so slightly fo uh, forward. So basically by repeating those inputs, we're able to get to the extremely precise interval. And we need the other coordinates to be correct while we're doing it as well. So it takes a lot of lining up to get all, all the different coordinates to all play nice. And there it is. And we decided to get rid of that guy here because he made us wait for so long. Deserved it. He, he didn't make you wait at all. I'm pretty sure you could have just did that instantly. Yeah, so all that setup was just to get in a very specific position to be able to throw the rock, talk to the guard, the rock pushes you through the guard as you're talking to him, and then you can escape without any items. But this wasn't the first this was the first hurdle of making one pause happen, but it wasn't the only hurdle because normally when we escaped we had other items like stick and uh, I think we had nuts and maybe a shield as well, so uh, there's a lot of things that we're not going to be able to do anymore because we don't have any items. Yeah, so this itemless escape was only found about two months ago. Um, uh, I, th yeah, I think it was late ago, February. Yeah, a month and a half, two I months started, ago. I started the task like a week after it came out, give or take. And I started the task on like the 24th or 25th of February. Yeah. And escaping the forest was a really big hurdle for any kind of low pause run because previous, uh, previously there was always th there were like several different methods of forest esca escape, but every single one required pausing for some item, whether it be sword shield, nut sticks, um, any of those. But finally, a way to escape it with no items. And I think it pretty much removed a pause from every single low pause category. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if, uh, if the setup had come out on time, you know, from, for the actual uh, making of the task there, but... Let's just say that the, the last thing that Jolin made is not going to be the, uh, the next trick coming up. There's, there's uh, another thing he did um, that will speed things along pretty nicely later oh, on in the run. Cool. So I'm guessing so you're going to Gerudo Valley now? That would be correct. We can't do much as a child, but there's one thing that we can get, and it's going to prove to be pretty important. Out of curiosity, how many people actually know why he's side hopping? Yeah, so side hopping is slightly faster than back walking as child if all your side hops are perfect, which of course they are here in this Oted. Because this is optimized. Oh. Okay, that one wasn't. But it's okay. I mean, the only yeah, reason I ask is because we don't see ZFG side hopping as child. I'm, ju I'm just throwing it out there. I I'm just not as good as Tess. Okay, I remember this trick, but I always remember having to do a jump slash to do this trick. Yeah, we're gonna become a helicopter instead. Cool. This trick here is also very incredibly precise, to the point where you have to go up onto that post there twice, because for some black magic it does not work the first time. Interesting. And somehow you get different coordinates the second time you backwalk exactly the same onto that. Nice. So that is the spinning madness from Jolin there, as he called it, um, and allowed us to get uh, past that fence there with the cuckoo without having to have a stick to jump slash. And uh, it's pretty, pretty precise, which is why we needed the the 
the setup there, because um, it's really hard to get set up on the post without it. Yeah, it's a really old trick. It was found like many, many years ago. You could uh, jump up there with a, a Coco and a Jump Slash. And um, it was always thought that you needed like a Jump Slash to get over there. And yeah, I guess with, with an incredibly precise jump, you can actually get there without anything. And now here in Gerudo Fortress, you can get past the gate just by climbing up that ladder, side hopping onto the ledge to the side, and just bypassing the gate completely. Yeah. And Child can just back walk over that quicksand if you go on the very edge. So now Child's going all the way to Spirit Temple without any items at all. You know, 10 minutes ago we were in Kikiri Forest, now we're in like some apocalypsis wasteland. And we didn't bring any protection with us either, we've got no weapons, no shields. We're Might just have been all a bad idea. How are you going to do anything without any items? Well, there's something that you can do, and that's, uh, you can still learn songs, even if, uh, even if you don't have an ocarina. Well, I guess we technically have the ocarina, but you don't need to actually use it to, uh, to use it. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> So wait, if we didn't have the ocarina, which we do have, just know that you we can have still, the ocarina. You can still learn the song, even if you have no ocarina. Okay. Yep. That's Okay, we're gonna beat our first dungeon now. Oh, you already nope. left. <laughs> JK. Alright, so yeah, Child can still learn the song just by entering and leaving Spirit Temple. And this will be useful later on for coming back as adult. So, who is this character? I don't know. Never seen her before. I, I, I think it's a Fire Emblem character that made it into Smash. That's the only place I recognize that character from. Oops, I let out a spoiler. <laughs> I like how the, the height of Link plays around in this cutscene too, because you're supposed to be adult, so he's twitching up and yeah. down. Yeah, whenever Link is in a cutscene where he's supposed to be adult when he's child, or he's child when he's supposed to be adult, like the, the game can mess with his height. Yeah, I think adult looks a little funnier, because he looks like, you know, he's got no shins, basically. Yeah, he like gets squished. So now the next thing we're doing is we're going to be dying, because we don't really have a way back from here. We've got no way back to the main world map. If the guards, you know, even if we were to make it back to Gerudo, the, the guards won't catch us on the other side of the fence's child. So the only way back is actually to kill ourselves. Well, you could pause quit, but... But that can't. would take... Yeah, that would take Pausing. my one, one pause. <laughs> I've only got one, I'm not going to use it uh, this early. So guess what? We're back in forest. And we need to get out again. Oh boy. But, guess what? This part of the run was done after Jolin made a setup. Oh boy. I'm sad now. I wanted to take a bathroom break. This one here is vaguely, with a lot of pause buffering, RTA viable. 
Did you just say pause buffering? Yeah, you'd have to, you know, not for other categories and stuff, but this this setup here is vaguely RTA viable. So which category would you do this but pause? Uh, I don't actually know. I'm pretty sure that this is like mainly a low pause strat. I can't think of any other category that would use this. Yeah, maybe like a low equip instead of a low pause RTA sort of route, but... If anyone does that, let me know so I can eviscerate them. I mean, I'm pretty sure the run will do that on its own, but... <laughs> and to whoever was asking, yes, I am Canadian. A. And the one thing I was kicking myself for here is I actually, I should have gone for the, the flesh strats here and saved like the two seconds of owl text, but my brain wasn't thinking. So how would you do a forward ESS without a object? You just like jump off, there's a flesh strat that's used sometimes in No I Am Wrong Warp, uh, where you basically just side hop into the water and hold ESS coming out of it. And if you have a good position, you can get like four and a bit speed, which is makes it a little bit faster than talking to the owl. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to wait here. There's no way around it. I tried, um, you know, doing the other stuff second and getting bottle first, but it actually turned out to be like 40, 50 seconds slower, uh, just because this is more optimal actual routing. And either way, you have to wait for a day-night cycle. So. So how's everyone's day going? Luckily, this this is not the longest uh, day night cycle. My day's good now that it's day. Cool. Yeah, so if you enter Kakariko super early, you don't get music, but you still have all the cuckoos. And that's what we needed. We just need the chickens. Let's be real, the chickens. Everyone's favorite part. The next low Ted is actually just gonna be beat the game, but without getting the chicken bottle. Because every single run does this thing. That'd be a crazy run. Yeah, every time I do task stuff, this is the one part that I always, I'm like, oh god, no, now I have to spend like a couple hours doing cuckoos. Yeah, this actually seems awful to test. You just say a couple hours? How long are we gonna be here? No, it just it takes that long to task Cuckoos, but... It probably took me like an hour, hour and a half, probably, to do Cuckoos. Did he just have to like keep reloading states and hope for good Cuckoo luck? Yeah, just sometimes they like walk away from you, and then at a point too, you're like, you know what, it's a low tad. I don't mind, uh, just being a little little less optimal in the few spots just to to get cuckoos over and done with. ZFG seems to know a suspicious amount of how to TAS chickens. I I have not done it myself. I have just always been curious about how people can do it uh, while being sane. Yeah, this last Kako wasn't playing nice, but I just I had had enough of Kakos by then. <laughs> Alrighty. You don't need to use the bottle just yet, but this is the quickest bottle to get, especially since it doesn't require any items or anything fancy to do, so... I'm pretty sure all the other bottles would require at least one pause just to get them, so... Now, only the most astute viewers will notice, but he actually just skipped the owl. 
Yeah, there's another yeah. owl outside Kakariko, and targeting that sign is just to avoid talking to him, because the owl can't talk to you while you're in range of the sign and while you're targeting it. So right now we're just collecting some rupees, because we need to buy some stuff. We might not be able to acquire items, you know, because we don't have any items in most ways, but we, uh, we do have a wallet, so... You can at least buy stuff. There was another owl skip too that was pretty unnoticed as well on the way to Gerudo by hugging the, the left hand wall. I actually didn't notice that. I'm not astute. Now that roll at the beginning there is necessary just because you'll otherwise you target and talk to the um, the block thing there. So sometimes some of the movement looks a little weird, but it turns out to be the fastest. Okay, I, I find it interesting that we haven't beaten any dungeons yet. We're just going straight adult. Whoa! What the heck? So there's not many things Link can do uh, without any items, but becoming an adult is one of those things. And by becoming an adult, we're going to have access to a, at least a few more items. Like a sword, the shield we just bought, those Deku Nuts we just bought, the Ocarina that we already have, and um, as well as bombs that aren't actually in our inventory yet, but are still on our uh, C buttons. Yeah, so luckily when you become adult, the game auto-equips certain things. Um, Master Sword will obviously always be equipped by default. If you have a Highland Shield, then it will be equipped. And then your C buttons will be Deku Nuts, if you have it, Ocarina, if you have it, and Bombs, even if you don't have it. Um, bombs, I don't think, will be useful until later on. I don't even know if they will be. I don't know, I don't know if that's spoilers or not. But uh, luckily, Deku Nuts and Ocarina will both be auto-equipped as a doll. Yeah, so now, cutscene. Yeah, no way around this one. I'm actually not sure if you have Mirror Shield equipped, or if, if you have Mirror Shield, if it gets auto-equipped. I think... I think yes, but I'm not 100% sure. So now's a good time to pay your bills if you have any. Or go pee or something. Call your go mom. Go get a snack if you need. Hydrate. Remember to hydrate. Now's a good chance to send a message in CFG's chat. So what are they even talking about in this cutscene? I don't... No one ever plays the English version for whatever reason, so I have no uh, idea. Uh, something about Link being a big boy and Ganondorf being a bad boy. Yeah, something about Link not being strong enough for whatever to hold the sword yet. And Ganondorf runs wild and takes over the world because Link isn't there to stop him. I can't tell if these are actual answers or not. That That's like the actual... Like, what's going on? That's the true lore. Then what does this medallion represent? Absolutely nothing. I think I think the actual in-game, uh, what it says in-game is like, Raru gives his power to you. Except the light medallion does absolutely nothing. It lets you know if your, your file is adult or not, and, I, and file select, but that's about it. True.
wait, I know this character. Yeah, didn't we already see them? I don't know, I had a lot of sand in my eyes the last time we saw them, so I can't be sure, but... I'm gonna make a prediction. I don't know anything about Ocarina of Time, but I think that you're gonna just play Song of Desert after this cutscene. Don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. That's just my guess. Predictions are spoilers too. Whoa, you're right. Okay, I can no longer say I know nothing about Ocarina of Time. Clearly, this, this I is, know everything. This is pretty much the only way to get out of this room in the first place. Uh, you can't get out of that room without either save warping or using hover boots. Uh, both of them require pausing, and that's bad. Yeah, you could clip out of bounds and die, um, and then start at the front of the temple. Oh, that's but true. But what we need is can, is here, so it works out that it gives us a way out of the room, and also takes us exactly where we logistically need to go. Yep, so here is a very exciting trick. It's what you've all been waiting for. It's gonna be a while. So, uh, we need to get to the top of Spirit Temple, and without entering Spirit Temple, because there are too many things that need items in there. So, it's time to hover using Gwe's. Okay, I have a series of questions. What exactly is actually stopping you from going through Spirit Temple without having to equip stuff? Uh, on one side is the child the child side, which obviously you can't get through because of the crawl space. On the adult side, there's the silver block that you need silver gauntlets to push. If you had hover boots, then you could clip out, clip out of bounds. If you had either hover boots or bomb shoes, you could clip out of bounds and get past the silver block. But uh, obviously both uh, hover boots and bomb shoes are not accessible as they would require both a pause and getting the item, which is which we don't have right now. So, can't really do anything past the first room of Spirit Temple. So, gotta hover up. Luckily, I did get a little bit better at Gwei hovers since last time, so I was able to keep a lot more of the Gwei is alive. Nice. Uh, which means that they come back uh, and usually attack you again pretty quickly. Oh, someone mentioned uh, you, you actually can do a Hess clip off of the Armos, and you can use that to get past the Silver Block, but then you can't get past the next room because you need to hit a switch on the ceiling, and you'd have nothing to hit that. Maybe you could hover off the Beamos? Probably not. I don't you think you'd get high enough. Yeah. yeah. And even then, if you can get past that... Um, even if you can get past that, you need Zelda's Lullaby in the main room. And what stops you from getting Lullaby? We're adult now. <laughs> uh, I don't think you get earlier. to Lullaby without equipping something. You need to equip either Egg or Explosives, right? Yeah, either one of those two. And that would require a pause. Okay, why do you- why would you need Egg or... E egg thing? would be to wake up Talon, and then if you don't wake up Talon, you need to do a damage boost. I thought oh, you were that, to... that mode. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were trying to bait him into saying a certain name there. <laughs> no, I just actually had no idea. We are currently still at zero pauses. The game has not been paused yet. No Even one if has it may look like hit. it's paused right now. On the opening screens, too, it's worth noting that even though it says press start, you can hit A there, which is what we do. All so right, I, Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I need to know if anyone's like actually lost on why we're standing in midair or not. I don't know if that's common knowledge yet. Yeah, so you... Uh, here, to hover here, you have no explosives, so you have to just wait for the Gwaze. The Gwaze are, you know, they're, they're enemies with random movement patterns. 
and you have to wait for them to come attack you to hover off them to backflip and shield their damage to hover. Yeah, we try I tried doing this a different way too where I went up to get mirror shield as well at the same time. But uh the glaze didn't follow me high enough over that way to uh to make that not something that would it, it would have taken like 50 minutes just because the glaze were showing up every like 2 minutes by the end and and no one no one including myself wants to wait around for 50 minutes. That's too bad. It would have been cool because it would have involved like side hopping onto one of the seams uh, up top there and not falling down and then jumping back off of there onto a Gwei when he came to attack, but it would have just uh, ended up being a lot slower, so. So what are we, about halfway there now? Uh, about halfway to Stonehenge, maybe. What is Stonehenge? Is that a thing? Um, no. It's not a real thing. Whoa, a target. Nothing happened. Yeah, that was just, that was just so I can see better. <laughs> nice, understandable. And also to give the viewer a little bit more, you know. I, I know some people like to just see Link from the ankle down, but... Yeah, I, I know all the people on YouTube comments that always hate backwalking because they can't see what's going on will appreciate that target so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Yeah. Anytime you see a Gwei actually die, believe me, I tried every possible way to keep that Gwei alive because... It saves, you know, a decent amount of time every time you don't kill them. But, uh, if they're dying, it's because it was the will of the gods. It happens a lot more lower down once I get higher up. It's a lot easier to keep the Gwaze alive. So how long before Mega Gwei shows up? Um, I forget how many Mega Gwaze there are. I think there's two Mega Gwaze. Cool. I know where one of them is, but I'm not going to spoil that one. Yes, for those who don't, who don't know about Mega Gway, after you kill a certain number of Gways, a very large one will appear. Yeah, I don't know what the number is, but I feel like it's somewhere in the like 8 to 10 ballpark. I'm just wondering what people are thinking, the ones that were mad that you had to wait till day in Hyrule Field. <laughs> but hey, look on the bright side. I, I managed to shave three minutes off of the two pauses, Gway Hover. So, three minutes of your lives. But you're not that's wasting a, watching a Gway Hover. That's a pretty big optimization. <laughs> Alright, we're getting there. Getting pretty high up now. Okay, I have a small game to play. I'm going to read a SDA comment and someone has to guess who said it. <clears throat> okay, let's try something else. I quit the run. Well, guess I got everyone's attention now. And no, I'm not quitting the run. You guys were too obsessed with where MQ came out that you couldn't stay on hey, top. Wait, that was Mega Gway. That was a Mega Gway, yeah. <laughs> It's always a sad day when a Mega Gwei has to die. There he goes.
F for Megagway. Lost but not forgotten. Maybe one day he'll rise like a phoenix and, uh, and meet up with us again. So did anyone guess who the comment was from? Well, I'm stumped. Oh, I wasn't gonna say who. It's just up for viewer interpretation. The one thing I can promise everyone is once this hover is done, there's not really much in the run that isn't fast. How long is the day-night cycle in OOT? I believe it's about two and a half minutes. I think slightly less. Yeah, d daytime is twice as long as nighttime. <laughs> And I forget the exact measurements now. I had it written down earlier. It's now like 80 seconds. Yeah, I think nighttime is like a minute 20 ish, and then daytime is uh, like 220 ish or something. Yeah, I think daytime's exactly double. Just because the, the amounts are actually the same, it's just that daytime only advances at half the speed that nighttime advances. Okay, yeah, so. that would make sense. <laughs> at least we have some nice music here. Yeah, of all the music that we could have, uh, Gerudo Valley is probably my favorite OOT track. So it's, uh... It's fortunate that this is the music that we've got and not, you know, 20-odd 20, 20 minutes of, uh, of Mweep or something. How many in-game days has it been? I think it's been like three. Oh man, something's happening. I think the best possible outcome would be to just get the heart piece and then enter the dungeon through the bottom entrance. Yeah, that'd be worth it, that 20 minute hover for a heart piece. Oh, that was a fast one. Yeah, once you get up a little higher here, um, if you keep the Gways alive, they do come back pretty pretty frequently because you're kind of up in the area that they circle, so you're pretty much always close enough to, to trigger their aggro. Oh, man, I feel like if someone TAS this, it would be like 10 minutes. I think the hard part would be the bottom, like once you get up higher to to have pretty quick hovers up. Although sometimes you, have, you can only get, you know, three to six units of height at a time just because of the way the, the Gwei is coming at you if he's coming from a weird angle. Man, this is going so much faster. So normally the intended way to get up to this uh, chest is to just pause the game and then it warp warps you up there. But since we can't pause, we have to do this hover. I'm not quite sure if that's accurate. Something seems off about that. Oh, that sounds pretty okay to me.
And to whoever was asking, I did all the inputs for this task, which was uh, for two, uh, just under two and a half hour run to do all of that with one person in like a month was quite a lot of work. So there's the odd spot that I had to, you know, try to cut a few corners to to make it realistically possible for me to finish all the giant workload. But but yeah, this wasn't a script or anything. I sat here dealing with all these greys and I, don't, I mean the grey hover alone probably took the better part of an afternoon just to get done. Half of that's because you can only do so much grey hovering until you need to take a break. Yeah this seems pretty rough to do. Yeah, I think I turned on a movie and just like advanced until I saw Link get knocked down by a grey and then I would you know, go back a little bit and do something, and then I'd just stand there and wait till I got hit again. Dang, that one, that way lasted quite a while. Yeah, but he's got to die for bigger and better things to come along someday. Okay, I think everyone fell asleep. You can use Elder Levitate now. Yeah, no one will tell. <laughs> no one snitch, okay? Yeah, we don't even need to use Elder Levitate. We could just use some, like, memory editing and just change our coordinates. This guy really knows how to cheat. If you're gonna do something, do it right. We're getting closer. Don't worry though, we're, we're almost at the top, I can feel it. We're at the top of the screen, if nothing else. Can't even see Link. Yeah, to make things easier to line up with the chest, I needed to do this all in inverted camera, so I couldn't uh, retarget any glaze or anything like that to, uh, to make Link on screen for the second half. Oh no. Oh no, he oh, finally died. He had a good run. No glaze were harmed in the making of this video. I literally yeah. saw like 10 glaze die. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> they, they weren't getting harmed, they were just taking a little nap. Sure. I mean, I didn't see me hit them or anything. If they flew into me and, and hurt themselves after, that's that's their own fault. Always blaming the victim. They're just falling asleep because the hover is so boring. Well, guess what? We're just about there. Oh? You still seem pretty far away from the chest, though. Pretty high up, but that chest is pretty far away. 
How are you gonna get over there? Well, magic, I would think. You don't have any magic. <sighs> oh no, another Gray died. I thought you just said they were napping. Uh, that that one ran into me like like hitting a plate 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 of glass and just dropped. That that one wasn't harm. That one that was self harm. Is that oh, Mega Boy? What, what's that big wing? Is that the R wing? I think it's there's the only one kind of flip that would get us all the way to that chest there, and it's not just any old Mega Flip. I think we'd probably need a Mega Gway Mega Flip to get all the way to that chest. Whoa, that sounds hardcore. Too bad we won't be able to see it. Whoa. And there it is. Now, I know what you're thinking. I just watched a 20 minute Gway hover. I really want to watch a minute and a bit of cutscene. I got you covered. Yeah, so what's up with Silver Gauntlets? I don't even get this in Hundo. Why do you need this? Uh, well, this just happens to be the only strength upgrade that we can get without equipping any items or pausing or anything like that. Um, obviously, the ones in Shadow Trial are a little bit of a pain to get to. You'd need uh, to either wrong warp into the castle, or to have beaten everything else first to get there, or to hover over all those things requiring other items. And uh, then the Goron bracelet would require Saria's song, and uh, and having Ocarina as child, which that's not going to be an option either. So this was the the only strength upgrade we could actually get. All and right. That we spent all that time coming up there, we're jumping right down. <laughs> <laughs> Takes so long to get up, so quick to fall. At least it didn't take 20 minutes to fall. Also, if anyone's watching on YouTube because I skipped ahead, you actually have to go back because you missed a pause, so you're you're not going to want to miss that. You can't just do that to the YouTube viewers. <laughs> That's very mean. <laughs> All right, so, so back adult, simple. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, as adult, um, rolling is slower than side hopping. Still, so there will be some side hopping, but anything that's longer than, uh, you know, about three or four side hops will usually be a backlog. Yeah. So now we're adult and have something to use with the silver gauntlets. To have some kind of item to actually do something with. So I wonder what's gonna happen now. I wonder where we're going. I don't even remember where we're going. I think we're going to Kakariko. Oh, I know sure exactly where like we're it. going. We just got a strength upgrade. The one thing that we'd really like to have is uh, is some explosives. And uh, I happen to know a certain place where we can find some of those. The bomb I know shot. what's happening. Now this is your only l real glimpse of like hardcore Cassie stuff. Oh man, a slide. I did it in the last run, so I was like, I can't be outdone by my my previous run. So I had to at least at least do any hardcore strat that my old run did. Yeah, so the strength upgrade allows you to actually lift up the bomb flowers and can actually do stuff in Dodongo's Cavern without pausing. I had to go way hover for this view. Hey. 
Unfortunately, the cycles of the floors aren't as good as we're used to when we use bomb shoes to break the thing here, so it's a little bit more troublesome to get to the other side. Yeah, Silver Gauntlet does allow Young Link to pick up stuff too, so it acts like Young Link has a uh, Gorm bracelet. I'm just surprised that Adult Link can't pick up a Bomb Flower without Silver Gauntlets. Yeah, the the game is like supposed to imply that Adult Link can pick stuff up without the Gorn Bracelet since when you pause as adult, if you have the Goron bracelet, it's grayed out to say that, you know, oh, adult can't use this. But in fact, Goron bracelet does affect adult Link's ability to pick up stuff like that. The gainers. I love watching gainers up that staircase. Yeah, it's, it's really soothing to watch every time. Yeah, so to do forward backflips like that, you have to go up against a wall, backflip and let go of Z on the same frame, and then on the next frame press Z again, and then your backflip will go forwards towards the wall. And now here's and just, bombs. Yeah, just skipped a good chunk of the dungeon with that one jump there for anyone who's not super familiar with... Uh with standard strats in a lot of the runs. Adult Link can just jump over and skip, you know, the other half of the dungeon that he just skipped. Okay, so reminder that uh, the bombs that are equipped on C right now were auto-equipped when becoming adult. Like, uh, when you become adult, the game will just always auto-equip bombs to C down, regardless of whether or not you have them. So luckily, as soon as you get the bomb bag, you just already have them. And, uh, yeah, you can do that super cool... Um, flip there to get into the Dodongo head without lighting the eyes. Yeah, it just saves a bit of time and then uh, using the Kisa uh, and Navi to, to do the switch there. Yeah, you uh, use Navi to check the keys as, uh, on the same frame you hit the switch and then you can um, move around while the cutscene of the door opening is going on so you can move to the door before the door closes again. Well, you're normally supposed to hold down the switch with a with a block. Did anyone else think this was the hardest boss in the game? No. No, I'm pretty sure I thought this was the easiest boss. Okay, so we just beat the first dungeon. If we extrapolate, this run will take us 7.2 hours. Cool. I'm down for that. And the, the YouTube viewers are going to be really excited when they finally, for the first time, see that the video is shorter than the expected time said in the video. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there a way to skip cutscenes in this game? It like, usually the... requires pausing. Or an, yeah, an item of some sort. Wait, why does it require pausing, usually? Well, you would need to pause to equip a bottled item. And a bottled item is not currently equipped. I love his knees right there. He's yeah, just le he must be limboing back.
the interesting thing here is even though he gets chased uh, up the mountain, he actually starts at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah, it looks really weird. Now that we have bombs, we can go a little faster. Time to actually move fast. I love this nosy Hess. Yeah, the nervous Hess. They're a pain in the butt to do that. <laughs> so what exactly made the Hess nosy? You don't <laughs> press Z. If you alternate between left and right ESS every other frame, he'll just kind of twitch back and forth, but he won't drop the Hess. Yeah, normally you need to... Uh, hold Z to continue Hessing, because if you just keep holding one direction, then once Link starts facing the same direction you're holding, the Hess will stop. But then if you just keep alternating constantly before Link gets to turn a certain amount, then you just don't have to press Z to keep it going. Ooh, nice mega flip. Nice cutscene skip. So he just did a trick there to grab the ledge right as the cutscene starts. And that causes this glitch where Link falls through the floor. And causes him to void out during the cutscene, which allows him to get the song and not have to watch the whole cutscene. I forgot to test this room here, or like this hallway, and it was bugging me like after I finished the thing and I realized I didn't test here and I could've. I was, oh, no. uh... I was kicking myself for a while. It's not like yeah, I would have saved a, a lot upset. of time. So you're only supposed to play Saria's song for Mido there, but just Mega Flip. You can even backflip, but obviously Mega Flip's faster. More nervous hessing. Well, we obviously don't care about speed. We didn't hess in that one room. <laughs> True. And you can do a ground jump here uh, to climb this uh, maze early. More cutscenes. This is actually here. the first major difference in the uh, in the routing between the two pause and the one pause was to get minuet really early and use minuet to uh, to speed up the rest of the run, which is the main reason I was able to shave off like almost ten minutes from the two pause. Nice. So yeah, that cutscene, you just die as you enter the cutscene, uh, and you get the song without having to watch the cutscene. Going to okay. Fire Temple. Shortest we only have like 20 time. seconds to get here before we die. That's why we gotta go fast. You seem very under-equipped for Fire Temple. I'll be alright. Fire Temple's unequipped for me. That heart there was sort of important. I just wanted to make sure I was at full health because there is the one room that it can get kind of tight, and even though I went full blowing on time save strats there and had like a decent amount of time left, I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't put myself into a box with uh, without a way out. Because yeah. I remember la last time I did that room, I was uh, I had three frames of leeway, and uh, I would have been pretty upset if I, you know, did all the work to do the room and then I couldn't finish it. Yeah. So the, the time you have left here when you don't have the Goron Chenic on is based on your health. So you have 8 seconds per full heart, or 2 seconds per quarter heart, so you want to have full health here to get the, me the most amount of time out of it. So pretty standard uh, start to fire temple. Just getting all the main main keys and everything like that, that you know, pretty much any run 
casual or not would. I mean, so far this dungeon looks exactly the same as how it did when I did speedruns in 2009. Yeah. This room I went across the middle because there's no way not to take a little bit of lava damage without, like, hover boots or going to me. And I wanted to have all my hearts. That was actually a pretty neat movement. So here you see, the, uh, you see the timer is like kind of blinking on and off. If you press a cutscene item in midair, uh, in this case it's the ocarina, it freezes the timer until you hit land again, and so every time he's side hopping, he's pressing ocarina to delay the timer. Yeah, and it works on any kind of... any time Link isn't on the ground, so it can be just jumping off a ledge. It can be backflipping, it can be just about anything that you can interrupt it with the cutscene item with, as long as you're not on the ground. That trick's not limited to just this game, it works in real life too. Like, if you're taking an exam, just like, keep jumping up and down. Good, good advice. That clip right there, um, if you have a certain angle and the bomb hits you at a certain time, it'll just boost you straight through the, uh, the corner between the block and the wall. Let you access the shortcut early. There's normally be a, supposed to be a shortcut you get much later in the dungeon. And I oh, find yeah, it kind of interesting that spamming Z, once he like entered the next floor up, it like moved the camera to follow him. Yeah, when you spam Z, uh, when you're climbing a gate or a ladder like that, it freezes the camera. I guess until the room transition. So this key you normally wouldn't see unless you're in a hundo run, I think. No, not even hundo would get it. I think Glitchless is probably the only main caddy where that gets it. I don't even know if Glitchless gets it. Yeah, there's enough extra keys in Fire Temple that they might have a faster one. Gene has to do this room to bypass all the firewalls there. And then by getting hit by the fire, if you're still on fire from that wall, you can't actually get hit by the firewall. So uh, that's why we get burned first, and then you can just walk through. That's how hacking works. You just go fast enough to bypass all the firewalls. So this is the main reason that we're uh, doing Fire Temple right now. One of them is because we needed bombs for uh, getting past block. But also bombs do work on the Flare Dancer. And we don't have any other items yet that would work on the Flare Dancer. So 
So you'll notice I damaged down in the Flare Dancer fight there by just getting hit by the bombs I was throwing and jumping into the fire in the middle whenever uh, it was opportune. And that's just going to help save some time in a, in a moment here. Can you hess up this? I don't think so. I think the turns might be too tight. Can you ESS up it? Probably. So that's why we took that damage there. At least you got the hammer. Yeah. Now we can't equip the hammer just yet. <clears throat> so if you're all about revisiting dungeons, you're gonna love this run. This room here was a pain in the butt to do, so I just, I did it like 20 times, and by the end I was like, you know what, this is the quickest one I have, just because the enemies in it were being very mean, plus I was trying to take damage during the fight. Nice. Yeah, to all the casual gamers out there, this was the hardest room in the whole run. If you can beat that room, you can do this run. <laughs> and again, we have to fight this Flare Dancer now too, which is why we're uh, fighting him now, because we have bombs. Uh, we can actually kill him. Few more helicopter spins for good measure. Wow, actually getting this chest. Not in random. Yeah, contains ten bombs, so pretty quick ten bombs to get. Wait, so you came here for the 10 bombs and not for the boss key? Uh, there's a megaton hammer switch right in front of the boss key. Oh, right, duh. So basically, we have to do it in two parts. Okay, so you have to clear out the flare dancer now and then get the, get the switch later for the boss key. I don't know why I did box movement right there. I realized that, like, when I watched it back later that it was slow, but it was a little too late then. Oh, no nervous hissing. No, you got an inverted start to the hiss, though, so... Yeah, it's still a little cool, I guess. I'm gonna mega flip past this waterfall. Mega side hop, I'm sorry. He only did that because he didn't have Wolby, otherwise he would have played it. That's way faster. <laughs> The fastest strat is obviously to go get the cucko. So King Zora is still blocking the way to Zora's fountain, but you can clip out of bounds and get in the yeah, water. Yeah, I did it with a Hess him. there, but you can even just jump slash to get out of bounds there. Yeah, it's a very easy out of bounds. That might be the easiest acute angle clip in the game. Yeah, it's a, it's up there for sure. Well, watch out. I'm really confused right now. Well, we're slowly guiding this tech type. Just want to make a friend. Is this equivalent to like scuttlebug raising? 
I'm not familiar with Scuttlebug, so I'm gonna say yes. Okay, don't look it up. What I found interesting is I wanted to see if I could reuse old inputs from uh, from the two pause tasks here, and the the guiding of the actual Tektite worked out exactly how it would. But then once he was in place, the Tektite RNG was like different then. So I thought that was kind of uh, nifty. Dang, that's interesting. All right, so I wonder what this Tektite is going to be used for. A hover. A mega flip. All right, this is a second Gwei hover, but with a Tektite. Whoa. And that's how you enter Jabu with just Sword and Shield. Yeah, so the loading zone for Jabu still exists as adult under the ice. So if you can clip into the ice, you can hit the loading zone. And so what he had to do there is hover into the corner between the ice and the ground. And use a tech height to do a, a mega side hop into the ice. That the mega side hop gives you enough speed to clip in, and then you can touch the loading zone. I think you have to hit the loading zone like coming upwards as well. Yeah. Which is why you need to do like normally the the side hops, and so you need to have a low enough height when you first start the trick as well. Yeah. If you're moving downwards um, when you clip in, then the loading zone won't actually activate. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing too special we can do in Jabu here. It's a lot of just uh, mindless carrying her around. And this part here is the one part of the run that I had a desync in and lost, like, a good 15, 20 minutes of gameplay. Um, so when I... this was the part where it desynced that, so I was just kind of, like, ready to be done with this part. So I kind of just, just did this part as quick as I could. Mind you, you can't really do it that much faster because a lot of it's just uh, carrying Rudo around. But you can skip that one block puzzle there because you're adult. Or that one switch puzzle. That's like a life lesson. Like, so many things you have to do just because you're a kid. <laughs> Yeah, the one that got desynced, you know, I mega flipped off of that, uh, that guy there and, you know, a little bit of swag down here while I waited, but I just di didn't have it in me to go for round two. Having a desync is one of the most demoralizing things that can happen in a task. If someone finds a way in this room without Rudo, does it, like, break the whole dungeon? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, if we could find a way in here without Rudo, it would save, like, two minutes. We could skip the cutscene with Rudo, we could just... Like, as soon as you enter that room with the Rudo cutscene, you would just do a glitch to skip that cutscene and then go straight to the back. Hypothetically, assuming you could get in here from that room. I had to hop over here to get this one rupee, because uh, that one rupee there turned 49 into 50, which is going to be important later on. If you're wondering why he didn't do Vibruto, that requires a pause, so we can't waste it on that. So now that I had just a quarter of a heart left, I can just warp back here and instantly die. Good way to die. And that way we can get sent back to uh, where we need to go.
I'm trying to even remember where I go next. I pass through the same couple parts in the run, like, so many times that... Unless I'm actually, you know, following along my notes, I forget where I'm supposed to go half the time. So far my notes just say 50 instead of 49. Buy we're gonna use, yeah, we're gonna use that one rupee and the other 49 we collected throughout the run. And, uh, and buy a fairy. Even if it's not equipped, it's still gonna be effective at reviving us. Is that the- so that's the first bottled item you've got so far, right? Yeah, exactly. And then we're also gonna get the, uh, the weird egg here. Egg? Or a cuckoo. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the egg. Well, now you know what came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, you needed to catch the chickens in order to get that, though. Oh wait, do you? No, you don't. To get what? No, you catch chickens for the bottle, which we already did, too. Nice charged no magic spin attack. <laughs> Anytime you see weird stuff, ha like weird, slightly slow movement, and then a lot of bombs appear, it was all RNG manipulation. Nice. I tried to do it fast, but sometimes you just gotta sl slow down and go backwards in life to go forwards. Uh, the old, old Shadow Early. Just yeah, because up. we don't have hookshot or any of that fun stuff, and because we do have a strength upgrade, normally we could do the, the old super slide teleport, but because we have a strength upgrade, we just grab that plant up towards yeah. our heads. That's one thing that sucks about strength upgrades is that once you get a strength upgrade, any kind of super slide teleport becomes impossible to do. So the dead hand fight is pretty standard. You have to wait as he's running away to attack him. He's only vulnerable right at the end. Yeah. Right before he digs. But you might be wondering, now you just killed him to get the hover boots chest, why are you running away from the hover boots? Well, it would probably take a, a pause to equip it, so I, I would imagine you probably don't want it. What's going on? We're doing a little bit of uh, we did an entry point glitch there so that our entry point is uh, out of bounds right now. And uh, currently we're hovering out of bounds so that we're going to spawn out of bounds. Yes, yeah, so the entrance point glitch, you, you have a certain speed when entering a door and that way uh, the door doesn't close. Uh, after opening it because it only closes after a certain after link goes a certain amount past it And so you can use that to yeah. set Link's spawn point so that when he respawns it'll be towards the door So he walks through the door after avoiding out You can use yeah, that to get to this room out of bounds And be revived and by the fairy fairy was yeah the fairy let us walk a little bit inside hop while we were dead there uh, Which let us actually land in the right room Without that fairy, this uh, wouldn't be possible there. Cool trick here. This is the only 1.0 exclusive thing in the run. Everything else could be done on any version. So, you know, 
if yes. you're feeling ambitious. Well, on, the, on the 1.0 and 1.1 version, you're able to drop a bomb down the hole before the fight starts, and it stuns Bongo, and it, it cancels the cutscene that happens when, when you normally fall into the fight. Then you just go down there, he has the giant invisible hitbox, and you just hit it a bunch, and you're done. Wait, so uh, was it not possible to do the newer boat skip method? No, those need hover boots. There's a way to do it without hover boots. Not that I, I don't know, I asked around, no one seemed to know what it was. Oh. You better absolutely need that heart container, or I'm not, I'm not gonna do my taxes. Well, we're fighting Volvagio later, and we aren't getting a Goron tunic, so... I'm gonna say most of the heart pieces we get are pretty necessary. Now, unfortunately, we had no way to skip this cutscene here, because our bottle currently empty and not in our C buttons. But fortunately, this cutscene's only about a minute and a half. Yeah, it's one of the shorter medallion cutscenes. Uh, are we at two dungeons? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah two. that's two officially completed and two dungeons we've just gone into, gotten the main key item from the dungeon, maybe done a little extra stuff and then left. I'll have to look into that Neko strat, because I am just uh, out of boredom when I finished. I started retasting this to see how fast, like, if I could uh, make an improvement. Nice RNG manipulation. Man, the, the charge spins were really good to me for, for making bombs appear, so I just went with them a lot of the times. I think I know where we're going next. Is it the Deku Tree? Yeah, I think you might be correct in that one. So you can get into the Deku Tree as adult by skipping a load trigger between the main Kiri, uh, Kiri Forest area and the area with the Deku Tree. So that out of bounds thing was just to skip the load trigger. Now the Decatree's mouth is not loaded, and you can go straight in. We pull sword right there to cancel the text for the vines. And this is still the only good working setup I've found for this here. This this strat here is almost as precise as some, some Jolin level stuff to get this ground clip. All yeah, the easy so ones have hover boots. <laughs> with, a, with a really precise mega flip, you can clip out of bounds there, and as you're falling, you can jump slash. 
part of a wall that's inbounds while you're still out of bounds to get a jump slash recoil. And you can land all the way in Goma's room. The boss loading zone is always loaded no matter where you are in the dungeon, so even though he was even though the current loaded room was really far away, the boss loading zone was still there. You just have to get get there out of bounds. Unfortunately, we need to take a bunch of damage. <laughs> Uh-oh. Desync. And then the strangest thing happened to it, um... It, even though I jump slashed into the cutscene, it wasn't storing the damage for some reason, so I had to do that extra jump slash there into Goma, which I needed to take damage anyways, but... I think you died, though. I'm oh, pretty no. sure I did, too. I guess we won't get to beat this dungeon yet. Uh, but this is actually pretty important, just, um... The only other item that we'd have later on in the run that could fight Goma would be Boomerang, but you can only hit Goma when uh, she's on the roof with that. And that would make the blue warp in like a pretty nasty position. And while I might have been able to figure out a warp, um, I just decided that this way is pretty much equally fast. Going back to Zora's domain, I guess. Yep, we got a few things we still got to do while we've got bombs. All right, going to Water Temple it looks like. So you can clip out of bounds here using that ladder. You like grab the ladder, uh, like right where it meets the the ledge, and then you clip out of bounds. You can take the warp over to Lake Hylia. RNG manip. Yeah, I I was happy that, that I got uh, at least two bombs in the first one, but I couldn't make three bombs happen with the with using the bomb to make it uh, explode. But oh well. You know, in a TAS, you don't have to do the RTA setup. You could just jump slash. Yeah. yeah, so you can, you can clip out of bounds here with that house, you like backflip into the corner, and then you can just from out of bounds here swim all the way to Water Temple. No need for opening the gate with hookshot or iron boots. Keep in mind to equip Iron Boots as a pause, so every time you want to use them, you have to pause for Water Temple. So you probably don't want to do that. I don't want to do much of Water Temple, period. This fairy here was actually the biggest bro, too. Just to um, happen to get opened up by the pot here, because I'm actually going to need that health pretty shortly. I love that slow back walk while walking up the slope. Yeah, it's the only, you know, without hover boots on. You can't stop moving while you go up the stairs, otherwise you'll slide down. But if you walk really slowly, you're still going backwards, so you won't fall down, so you can uh, time the, the spikies properly. That, that was a really neat bosky skip, too. 
So um, there's this new-ish method of clipping through certain walls like that, where you do a short hover, uh, like just one or two hovers off the ground, and then you fall from the hover and get hit by something, and the combination of falling from the hover gives you a very high downward speed, and getting hit by the bomb get, gives you a high uh, horizontal speed, and the combination of that allows you to clip through the wall. And so you just do like this one short hover, get hit by a bomb, and it boosts you through the wall. And now Morpho without hookshot. Everyone's favorite. I think you can tell hearts that I'm pretty glad uh, I had her going. <laughs> Is this why you picked up the heart container? No, but it actually worked out to be really beneficial. You can dodge Morpha, but this is just faster because it kind of helps skip the animation of climbing up the ladder too. I thought that Morpha fight was going to take me a, a long time to task and like... I, I did the whole thing in like three minutes or something like that. Morpho was just being a total bro and just sitting right there waiting to get smacked in the face. Yeah, sometimes it can be really rough, but sometimes if if everything's going right, it's it, it makes it look like it's a lot easier than it really is. Yeah, I still had to like cultivate the uh, the the timing, but. Oh boy, another long cutscene. Yeah, this one here is a little bit longer. I think this one's closer to three minutes. Okay, just list a bunch of things that you can do in three minutes, and everyone who has to chat has to pretend I said that correctly. You just have to do one of those things. Go get a quick snack. It's Go April, hydrate. file your taxes. The stream has been live for two hours. You should have uh, consumed. Uh, I don't know what what's the number of ounces of water you should have consumed by now. Everyone, uh, go make sure you're hydrated. Probably 250 milliliters. I think it's at 125 every hour. Okay, we're running out of time, so now only short stuff, like tying your shoes. The pause has still not happened yet. There have been zero pauses so far. Can't be too much longer until the pause. So this is three dungeons now, right? Yes. Yeah, so DC, Shadow, and Water Temple are all beaten. Jabu, Deku, and Fire are like half beaten. And then... Spirit and Forest have not been entered. Spirit has been entered. Well, once. well, okay. Sure, it was entered for a second. That counts. Oh, it looks like we're going back. Okay, this time we have to go up to the mirror shield chest, so we need another Gui. Uh-oh. Oh, 
We're entering. Getting some bombs. Actually able to push the block this time. So just getting a normal key here. Standard key. Getting another bomb drop. We better use exactly 20 bombs for what we're about to do. Yeah, I hope so. Oh man. Faster hovers. No reliance on Gwaze. Is there going to be one Gwei? No, he had to sneeze. Oh. It happens. Okay, one Gwei hover. Okay, two. And we're up. Only two Gwei hovers this time. Here's the mirror shield, and... I feel like it's coming up. It has to be. It's, yeah, it's gotta be soon. We're almost at the most tight part. I was planning on using that one bomb for the Beemos in the Anubis room, because originally in my brain I forgot that I needed Hookshot to do uh, Statue Climb to actually hook the gate, so I ended up passing this temple as if I were uh, doing Statue Climb, and then I realized that I couldn't last minute and I had to go back to old strats. So you're saying you didn't have to use all 20 bombs? Well, I need even more bombs now, because I have to do it this way. But, I didn't need that one bomb that I got earlier, no. Okay. There's I just no it. way to go back without changing the RNG seed. Oh, we used our first nut. Oh, nuts were used back at Goma. Yeah, and also on the, um, I forget what they're called, the little guys in Boomerang Room. Wait, 
So we have like 10 nuts instead of 5? I bought 5 and I got 5 more in Shadow Temple. Wait, so we used 6 nuts? Yeah, yeah. We've, that was number 6. It was... There was 2 for the... The boomerang room, right? And then I think yeah. three or four I for Goma. Three, I use three on Goma. Just... Yeah, and and then one for the Bemos there. Yeah. So we're doing sort of like the old super slide strat here, but instead of super sliding from there, we're going to be doing a fair number of contortion hovers. Or sorry, not contortion, Kagari hovers. And there's the boss room. You don't have mirror shield equipped though. Not yet, but I think that tells you if I'm heading towards Twin Rova and I don't have it equipped yet. It should mean probably a lot of be things. able to use your brains. <laughs> it means we'll be coming back here later, right? Yeah, definitely. Third time's a charm. fight. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have hookshot to do Nabu Knuckle Skip or anything, but... I'm sure there's some way you can get out of bounds with just bombs and, and kill her at the same time, but... I don't think anyone's bothered to come up with the strat yet. Place your bets on what's going to be equipped. I'm thinking we equip uh, fairy. We don't. We already used our fairy. Got to be mirror shield. Here it is. Here it is. It's a pause. A bottle, hammer, equip swapped boomerang, and mirror shield. That's kind of fairy. Yeah, no bombs. I guess there will be no more bombs used for the rest of the run. Yep, that's the end of the bombs. That's why I didn't care about the bomb count too much. It just needed to be enough to get me into uh, Twin Rover's room. But. And so that will be the one and only pause used for the entire run. So the hammer pause is obviously for um, Volvagia. Volvagia can't be beaten without hammer. And then same for Boomerang, for Baronade. Baronade can't be beaten without Boomerang. And Mirror Shield. Obviously needed for a twin rova. So three of those, three of those equips are just for bosses that absolutely can't be beaten without that weapon. That Bottles item. for Phantom Ganon. So they're all for bosses. Yeah, of course. Uh, bottle isn't for bottle is for other stuff, but bottle is your wrong word button. Exactly. The one thing I realized while doing this fight is it's very hard to aim for Troll Rover with the shield on the, with the task controls. It's something you really need, like, a controller to get the right feel. Also, that's a Duble. The double. Wait. Two quick ones. You are doing a low task without a controller? 
Well, it's so hard to use a controller because when you're tasking, everything is visually two frames behind. It's really hard to, like, do stuff properly when you're playing two frames behind. Boomerang doesn't have any effect on Twinrova, but they do dodge it, like as if you're trying to shoot a projectile at them, so they do the spin, which is their dodge, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it just kind of stays out there for longer than you'd like when you're uh, trying to hold one of them in place. Yeah. My mom always walks in during this boss fight. Well, maybe you should get better at it then. There goes chat. <laughs> Bad chat. If you played on English, they wouldn't have to do this. Like, they'd be able to read what they're saying. Look, we don't- we don't- we're not getting this hard container, though. Optimal. This one's way too slow. This one's a really slow heart container. So that's four dungeons done. Four done, four to go. So we're halfway there. So the new estimate's like three hour something 330 ish but is it really Fort gonna be that long yeah fortunately we've half beaten a lot of those other dungeons the only one that we haven't visited at all right now is forest temple Where are you going? Where am I going? Oh, I know where you're going. You need to get some friends. I do need to get some friends. I also need to get some bugs. Just going kind of... in the wasteland reverse. All I wanted to do was backlock there, and the glaze would, or the levers would just not leave me alone. <laughs> I took this angle way too wide there, but oh well. The new and improved task one day will will fix that. Get it right in zero pause. Oh, 
Zero pause all dungeons is gonna be something special. Oh wow, I'm surprised you don't even need any kind of special angle for that backwalk. Oh, over the... Um, going backwards, you kind of do. If you hit it at an area you go too long, you'll still sink. But some of the areas are short enough that you can just backwalk over them, because it, it's oh. already kind of pushing you the right direction. That, that's a very nice way to get out here quickly. Yeah, because we don't have hookshot, we're booted right back to the carpenter's tent. And... Uh, we use a, a curved backlock there. I actually used a lot of curved backlocks in the run, just to kind of shore up a few backlock angles and stuff. Oh yeah, was that whole uh, thing just to avoid lighter cutscene? Because if you didn't do that, you'd uh, waste exactly. lighter cutscene? Okay. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. And we don't want, you know, I've got no intentions of uh, equipping light arrows later, so there's no point wasting four minutes getting them. And hey, Lakita, that, that one was a, a no setup uh, entering of the house. Yeah, I was going to say, I wasn't actually expecting the character development. I didn't want to ruin it before, but... Okay, we're finally gonna beat Jabu Jabu's belly. Yep, but guess what? We gotta get back inside his belly. So if you liked visiting dungeons more than once, you're gonna love visiting Tektite, uh, Tektite entrance more than once. Oh boy. Compared to the two pause runs from the past, though, this, uh, I actually got pretty good luck with the, the Tektite at, uh, at getting off these mega slide hops and getting to the right hover height pretty quickly. Gotta get into just the right position again, and then Mega Side Hop. This time it's gonna be a little bit quicker of a dungeon though. How are you crossing this gap? Beer is so slow. Nice. I love mega flipping off of enemies like that. Man, this used a lot of, uh, this run used a lot of enemy mega flips. Yeah, it really does, or mega side hops, or... I mean, when you don't have explosives or any of that stuff, you gotta make use off of, uh, everything else. We've had mega side hops, mega backflips, A slides, maybe some other stuff off of enemies. And now we don't fight. have nuts. Oh. Don't have nuts for this fight, so we have to have some 
well-placed sword swings there to hit as many berries as possible per swing. Yeah, this fight is fairly annoying if you don't have nuts. Nuts are actually so useful in this fight. And also, uh, there's that weird thing that happens for this third phase where if you don't kill the berries super fast in the first two phases, then the third phase, uh, Baronade has invincibility for a short amount of time. It's really weird, I don't really understand why it happens. But that's why he had to wait so long to throw the boomerang there. Yeah, the like, tail of uh, Baronade kind of comes out of the floor after a while, and once it's been out for like a second, then you can finally take damage. Yeah, and then taking damage uh, while Baronade was in the ground was just to make Baronade come up from the ground faster. And that's five dungeons. And you can't, you can't get mad about that heart piece there. That one's like right in front of you. Whoa, it looked like the silver gauntlets were stretching. That looked really weird. Yeah, no iron boots, unfortunately. Th this cutscene is so much better if you have iron boots equipped. Does it drag you down to the bottom? Yep. The so Link or uh, Rudo is talking to Air Bubbles. What is Link doing that's making that many bubbles? Actually, I don't struggling know. to breathe. <laughs> struggling. <laughs> Medallion's not even above your head there, it's like off screen. Use bugs for Ocarina items there. Yeah, and the ESSOI. Luckily, the bugs don't drown if you jump them on water, they can actually float on the water. I don't know how many times Bolero's played in this run, but I feel like it's like five or six. Yeah, it's a pretty common song. You can see the curved back lock there to kind of fix the angle. <laughs> And now all that uh, work we did before is gonna gonna pay off for us now. Now that we don't have to fight the flare dancers, because as you can see, we don't have anything that would uh, be effective against them. Unfortunately, boomerang doesn't do anything. Uh, are you not aware that hammer works? I think hammer works, but it's really slow, isn't it? Uh, it's oh wait, you have to, don't you stab the corner or something like that? Uh, no, hammer works just like normal. Oh. Uh-oh. Unoptimal route. Well, this was unoptimal the moment we did Gway Hover instead of the secret actual way to do this. You can't just say that on stream, dude. What do you think the word secret means? I didn't say what the secret was. It's not a secret when you say there's a secret. And that jump there normally doesn't work unless you're hugging the wall. But yeah, it's a you really... know why that, that jump uh, works when you're hugging the left wall? Uh, yeah, it's a really specific jump. There's this really interesting mechanic, uh, why it works. Danny, Danny B made a cool video about it. So there's this mechanic in this game where if you're very close to a wall in front of you, then um, like there, there's this kind of buffer area where even if you're a tiny bit away from the wall, you can grab it. And if you are very close to a wall next to you, and there's a wall in front of you, 
um, being next to the wall will give you that buffer area for the wall in front of you. And so you can kind of magnet uh, grab the wall in front of you just by being close to a wall next to you. Now we gotta fight Vabadja in kind of a special way to exactly but uh, do it in the quickest time possible with that. Yeah, so hitting Vavagia, um like that just does damage without making Vavagia fly in the air. But you can only do it twice, and then if you do it a third time, then Vavagia will fly After, in the yeah, air. Yeah, the third time. Yeah. yeah. And each Luckily, time it stuns, it does two damage. The boomerang is amazing against Vavagia. Yeah, Boomerang, they're doing two damage per hit, and then we've already done three stuns for two damage and one jump slash for four damage. Dead. And then all that uh, time stop with the, the timer stopping in midair, that was with pressing, um, pressing bugs in midair every time. Yeah, I didn't need to do it that much, just enough to uh, make sure I have enough time for the cutscene. Uh, so Volvagia's health, uh, Volvagia has 24 health total, and each stun uh, with the hammer does 2 damage. So, um, there are like, what, 4 stuns I think with the hammer, and then all the hits with boomerang plus the jump slashes. Yeah, plus 2 jump slashes. So this wrong warp is super awkward with bugs. The bugs love to run away from you. Yeah, that's why I gave myself that extra, like, half a second there, just in case the bugs decided to scurry around. I didn't want bugs to be the reason that I had to redo that whole fight. Yeah, so now he's doing a wrong warp. Uh, he did Ocarina items on the edge of the blue warp to be able to walk around while the blue warp was going on. Walked forward, died at the right time, so he dies right as he's supposed to get the fire medallion. And that wrong warps him to Forest Temple. And that's very convenient because without this wrong warp, how would you get into Forest Temple with no hookshot? Exactly, and I mean, we could have hovered up with Bob, but then we wouldn't have had what we'd need to finish the temple. Yeah, you'd have no way to actually fight the boss at that point. Yeah, otherwise, you know, it would have been nice to do 1080 or something like that, but... Dude, the boomerang as adult is actually so cool. Yeah, I love the boomerang. <laughs> Wait, can you have skipped this with a bug? I uh, you technically it, but can, it's but it's it's like the same time as not skipping it. So it's kind of pointless to do. The main use for skipping that cutscene is getting to the basement, not necessarily the time save from skipping the cutscene itself. I'm actually curious how we're gonna beat the boss. Or... Well, trust me, there's a lot of Forest Temple first before you have to figure that one out. Forest Temple is definitely by far the longest temple in the run. Even going in the map room. Get the map, get the map, get the map. <laughs> yeah. It's probably You get mad at me about heart containers and you want me to get a map? 
Well, since you got like two heart containers, you may as well get the map. It's the same speed. But I can actually use those type containers. You missed the hearts. Yeah. Did you angle that back walk specifically to miss the hearts? No, it's just that normally the hearts would guide you right into the side of the chest. Oh, okay. And I probably could have got them and like done a curved back walk, but hindsight's 2020. No, to me it looked like the curved back walk was specifically to avoid them. Oh no, I was just like a little bit off of being perfect, so I just curved the back walk a little bit, but... I definitely could have just slashed all those uh, Sculptulas, but I felt the need to uh, to use Boomerang on them. Gotta get the use out of it. Now this is a part here where we don't have Bomb, but luckily we have a Strength upgrade. Oh boy. Is it luck, or did we have to grind for like 20 minutes to get it? Yeah, I think it was intentional. <laughs> what a curved backlock is, is it's basically anytime you're holding the joystick at, there's two different like degrees of it. If you're at 8 on the notch, um, then it still counts as nothing, that's still the dead zone. But 9 is like a little baby curved back walk, and the 10 value is a, uh, is like a full-blown curved back walk. Especially like when, you're, when you're back walking, but holding very slightly left or right, and it'll curve it just a tiny bit. Yeah, there's only two units out of the possible 128 that, uh, that it falls under though, so it's a pretty small area to hit. Otherwise, you end up doing a guano walk. Let's just skip the two Navi text triggers there. This part of the temple is pretty pretty standard in most runs. Okay, so you're getting the bow, but you've already used up your one pause. What are you going to do with this? Well, you'll have to wait and see, but you shouldn't have to wait too long. Now, the one unfortunate thing is that if we were to kill ourselves in, uh, in Forest Temple, it would shoot, send us back to fire. And uh, so we have to go traverse the temple in reverse order now. <laughs> That text box triggers actually really troll on the way back. Man, yeah, it's so rare to see manually going backwards through Forest Temple. Feels so okay. good to see. I figured it out. My original question on how you were gonna beat Forest Temple, I know what you're gonna do. 
I'm not gonna say. I know it too, but you have to pretend to be surprised. Well, I would have been surprised if I didn't have time to figure it out. <laughs> well, okay, just just pretend to be surprised when it comes up. And here's the second final boss. Or wait, no, third. There's one more boss, I forgot. Alright, so you need to shoot Phantom Ganon coming out of the paintings. How are you gonna and do boomerang that? Boomerang doesn't work. Well, Boomerang doesn't work. I spent so long farming for that. Okay, so what he just did is he had Boomerang in his hand, shielded the electric attack from Phantom Ganon, and then pulled out Hammer, and yeah. in between, and in between, um, in between the shield hits of the electricity, he tried to pull out Hammer, and this causes a glitch called Action Swap, where. You can do other actions, uh, in this case, using an arrow by using the hammer now, the second item he tried to pull. And so, action swap is how he's shooting arrows now. And I have to backflip to shoot them, because you, can, you can't really aim them, but you can backflip and shoot them behind you. And get some height that way. Also, Boomerang is sick on Phantom Ganon, because... When you throw the boomerang at Phantom Ganon, he spins his staff uh, as like it's his kind of method of pretending dodge to dodge it. it, but it goes through his staff and actually hits him and stuns him, and so it's like an auto stun. Like he can't, he can't block boomerang, and so boomerang is OP on Phantom Ganon. Yeah, and it's uh, with the action swap before it worked out super beneficial. One of the only combinations. You know, that fires arrows that can actually damage enemies is the uh, boomerang to let anything to hammer, basically. Yeah, so like hook shot, long shot, and boomerang to hammer. Yeah, different combinations of items result in different, uh, different actions, and so it's pretty lucky that that one specifically, one that you have to use already equipped items for, works for action swap. Yeah, without it, there's no way that the route would be able to be completed, but... Alright, just All right. one dungeon left. And we've already killed the boss. You need two items to use action swap. You need some item to hold in your hand to start it with, and then you need uh, some other item to pull out in the middle of shielding damage. Oh, and if you mean like if, if you need the bow to actually shoot the arrows, uh, the arrows do actually come from your real arrow count. Like if you were to pause right now and you could see the arrow count, you would see he lost three arrows. So that's why uh, he had to get the bow. It's because if you didn't get the bow, Action swap would work, but then it would just shoot no arrows. It would like make the sound that you have no arrows. Yeah, and that, it actually makes the wasteland noises if you've got no ammo left. Oh yeah, yeah, because action swap can make some weird noises sometimes, and the wasteland one is uh, the typical one it makes. You actually should have wasted more arrows just to show that off. Actually, you probably can't because you have to like shoot arrows really slowly with action swap. Probably just yeah, time. You... Well, he didn't pass in that one room, so anything goes. True. That one has that would have saved me like probably six to eight seconds. Oh no. I'm more worried about, you know, fixing the, the itemless escape down to the setup version that saves a minute 20. 
I'm sure sometime, somewhere, someone will have a task where they, within like 30 seconds, find find that exact uh, coordinates and get it done faster. But but it's it's so precise. What is happening on screen right now? Um, Ganondorf was riding his horse through fire because it makes him look cool and edgy. Yeah, I think Nintendo just made some pretty sweet looking fire and then they were just like, you know what? <laughs> we gotta use this everywhere. One more Ocarina items to Minuet. This yeah, this here is actually to set the cutscene pointer to this being the last cutscene watched. I see. This is gonna look very silly. But it is necessary. So what are the Moblins supposed to be guarding? Like, what are they just... Why are they here? They have to guard the temple so no one gets in, even though the stairs are broken. Nice dude sliding on the ground. <laughs> Mido's just sliding, yeah, looking all derpy. I love that. Yeah, we've got some time to kill right now. <laughs> yeah, just a little desync. No, we're actually we have to wait for nighttime, uh, since we don't have any bombs to get over to uh, Deku Tree anymore. We're actually gonna have to make use of a sculpture that only appears at nighttime. So unfortunately, the only way to accomplish this is actually to wait for nighttime. And there's yeah, no so, way to really route around it. So even though right after beating Forest Temple, you're put right in front of Deku Tree, there's a bunch of stuff. A bunch of reasons why you can't go straight in. One, as you just said, uh, you need to wait for night so that a Skulltula appears there, because with no bombs you can't hover in, so you have to use a Skulltula at night. And then also the reason he played Minuet is because of a wrong work coming up, where if uh, his last cutscene watched was the Forest Medallion cutscene, it would either crash or softlock. I assume crash, right? You know? Uh, e either way, it wouldn't work. So you had to play Minuet so that the upcoming wrong warp would actually work properly. And so it looks really silly, like, being right in front of Deku Tree and then taking a three-minute detour to go back into Deku Tree, but it's all necessary. This trick is super cool. You need to hover into a mega flip off of that gold skull to just to get up here. Another use of uh of making our our friendly critters our uh, our only option to get to where we yep. need to go, whether it's tektites or skulltulas, berries. And this time, unfortunately, we don't have any bots to uh, to get down a little bit quicker, so we'll have to do uh, slightly older strats, but. So right now he's going up to get the compass. Pretty important item. I've lost my way. 
No, but uh, as a doll, you can grab one of these platforms, and when this platform goes back into the ground, Link goes into the ground with it, and you can drop and jump slash, and the jump slash recoil will take you to Goma's room. And the boss is already beaten, so the blue warp is right there, ready nice for wrong Nice and too. Really? I could have backlocked this, but I was having so much trouble with this for some reason. Uh, and I think it was because I was using a setup that didn't uh, take account for my different movement speed entering the boss room or whatever. Because all the other ones weren't working. So yes, yeah, another wrong warp setup. Uh, doing Ocarina items on the edge of the blue warp. Leaving the room at just the right time. So that the cutscene starts at the same time he leaves the room. Wrong warps to Ganon's castle. And that is all eight dungeons beaten. Now just the big guy. Is there a way to do credits warp under one pause conditions? Um, uh... I think you could probably get Eyeball Frog, but I think you'd need a wrong warp from Fire Temple, not Deku Tree. So then that would cause issues with Forest Temple. But I think there might be some kind of way around that. Okay, there's one more thing to solve. Somehow we have to get to the bottom of this castle without pausing. I wonder how that's going to be done. The rock has... Oh my god, the insta-clip. Can you not do the clip from the top? Uh, I think if you get super lucky, you should be able to get hit I by the rock. I but... tried for... 70, 80, 90, I don't know, I lost count. A, a little under 100 re-records of trying to get the god rock, and I only was getting knocked off, so... Yeah, I was just about to say that probably sounds uh, incredibly painful to test, to try to get that to work. It's actually hard to hit the loading zone at the same time you void as adult, too, when you're doing insta-clip. You have to kind of change where you're going to land to... Uh, to almost miss the loading zone by a little bit more. I don't know if it's because Adult is just bigger or, or what his deal is, but... Yeah, but any, anyway, the, the way that Void Warp works is you uh, you fall far enough to Void out at the same time you hit that loading zone, and then it spawns you inside the castle, but at a very high coordinate, so you can fall all the way down to the very bottom of the escape. Oh, I just want to throw it out there. The kiss... That was the first inputs I tried to get centered there worked out for the kiss. It was it was destiny. It was made, meant to be. That's how the kiss works. It, it's you get it first try or you just can't get it at all. If you load state, she doesn't do it. Yeah. She she knows that you're trying too hard. Has to be natural. You need consent. That's the most important thing. So doing that jump slash before the fight is just to store power crouch stab, so when the sword gets knocked out, you can still do master sword damage with hammer. With good old crouch stab.
We're nice. actually gonna get ISG because it's so OP against his tail. The height in which the hammer rests, like, hits his tail so fast every time. Is this Zelda's first appearance in the run? Uh, no, she got kissed. I mean, Before like, that. did it escape? Is that, like, the first we saw Zelda? Uh, unless she was some other uh, mysterious character. I guess. Yeah, as long as she wasn't pretending to be someone else we met throughout the run, then yeah. And that's it, Ganon is down. I love how the hammer glows instead of the sword there. And that's time. And that is Ocarina of Time, all dungeons beaten, only pausing one single time. So that was pretty cool. Had a lot of really neat tricks in that. Yeah, it's something... I'm trying to find the next category or something that I'm feeling interested in doing. Something with some interesting tricks, but not... Not too unknown that I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete it. Yeah, it, it's so cool that things like this are possible. Like, being the game with such a strange but interesting restriction. Yeah, what, one of these days I might try to finish my low A press any percent run, but I've been farming for the one input for like probably 50 hours and haven't gotten it to work yet, but Dang. one of these days, one of these days. That'd be cool. I think it was down to six A presses to beat the game, which is uh, pretty impressive. Oh, that's, too, that's lower than last I heard. Maybe it's seven, but I I think it's because I'm trying to skip the one A press that a lot of them just kind of accepted. Alright, so yeah, I guess uh, this is it for now. Do you guys have any final words you want to say? Um, this was a cool run. Uh, also, shoutouts to Kafta. That's it. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I'm gonna give shoutouts to Jolin. Without Jolin, like, this would not be possible. He's the one who made Itemless Escape, made the setups for it, made the Kako Jump, and uh, has done a lot for the community as far as coming up with uh, interesting God Impossible glitches. So, huge shoutouts to him. Um, shoutouts to the rest of the community for just putting up with my dumb questions during the creation of this. Uh, Shoutouts to the old Low Pause Patrol for helping with the two paws, because without the two paws um, before this, I uh, probably wouldn't have done this route here. So, big shout outs to them. And the last thing that I want to just fit in is uh, if anyone's interested in trying to learn how to task at all, I'm just starting a, a new mini series, I guess, um, the describing in a tutorial for beginners on how to task in Ocarina of Time. So, if you guys uh, are interested at all in tasking, then be sure to check out my channel and uh, and just check out those videos there. Oh yeah, I just saw started. that. I just saw that yesterday. That's pretty cool. Uh, actually, you should post those videos in chat. Make sure okay, everyone everyone goes to watch those. If you guys want to go get into tassing, go check that out. So, yeah, thanks for doing this run. It was uh, really cool to watch. Yeah, it was a lot of work for one person, which is why I had to cut a few corners and, you know, not do everything as perfect, but I've been thinking about just redoing the run and see if I can shave off another 10 or 15 minutes with some more optimal, um, you know, everything, 